today what I'll be speaking is based on my experiences. And what I have framed on is I've framed on five principles on cybersecurity that I like to speak today, and those all based on my experiences and data in the internet. Okay, so let's get started with my slide. Safety is only until the time we are compromised. How many of you believe that you are safe today? Safe in terms of cybersecurity. This one, I want some hand raised to know how many of you think that you are secured? Secured in terms of cybersecurity. Yeah, you feel like you are very secure. Nothing can happen to me. No one can hack my information from me. I'm really secure. How many of you think about that? Okay, it's really good to know that no one of you think that you're secure. But I definitely saw one hand raised and then just dropped it, but then it's fine. We human beings are a very uh, different kind of personality, if you believe it or not. So sometimes we feel that we are not, like, we are very safe. Until the time something happens to us, we feel that nothing can happen to us. We are living a life, we are going to our work, uh, everything our family is good, we are living a life. But certainly, sometimes people become sick, right? We uh, lose our near ones uh, in our surrounding. And that's the time we tend to realize that, okay, we cannot control everything that's going around. Let's just think about the COVID situation that has happened, that has turned our thinking, the mindfulness, all 360 degree, on what, how we use to visualize this into our world. The earthquake came, we had to just have that in. We have to survive the earthquake. We have to survive the COVID situation. So all of these things happen, and then we tend to realize, yes, we can control everything that's going around. What we can control is our mind, we can control our heart, and we can control our actions on what can we do next. We, we cannot do, control everything that's going around. In the prior world, there was nuclear attack, bioweapons, and uh, the messengers, and everything that's going on. But now, if I have to say, maybe I'm not sure if you agree or not, there is an internet. How many of you really think that internet, which has been a blessing to us, can also be a serious weapon in this world? Thank you. Thank you for raising your hand. Yes, it's re really good to see your presence. Yes. Every one of you may be aware of the war that is going on between Ukraine and Russia now, right? So there's been lots of restriction to Russia following the same in this global arena. But have you also learned, known that Ukraine had a very great um, cyber attack? It's a very devastating cyber attack in 2015, where its power grid was set down for around one to six hours, and it was a very bad situation in Ukraine that time. Currently, if we see from our country, maybe we have only the, I mean, experience 18-hour power cuts. So for us, maybe it's not, oh, whoa, whoa, what? So this is 60 hours, what can happen? But no, for the countries like Ukraine, it's a big thing. Where the people are surviving on these, all the things that is based on the power, it's a very big thing. Nobody knows what, I mean, no one agrees. Maybe people have uh, the rumors of, okay, this country has done that, that country has done that. But the cybersecurity has been a tool which people are using to attack where, I mean, when we are doing uh, some other kinds of attack, the cyber attack, the new, uh, I mean, other than cyber, the nuclear attack or some other kinds of attack, everyone knows that, everyone is into that. They know that, okay, now you are doing against this country, there are blockages and everything. But then when you have a cyber attack, it's very difficult to track. And that's where it comes, it has a power about. So maybe Nepal can do a cyber attack to Ukraine and no one knows about that. So yes, but India says that, oh, I'm buying a petroleum, then everyone has a focus on that. Yes, that's how the things are. And that's where I just want to give my some linings on the thing that safety is until the time, right? It's on, only until the time uh, it's confirmed that we have compromised. So with that, I just need to want to go to my second pr uh, principle. So this is a new world, edging bridge, a new approach to security. So with this, we just have two kinds of person. One, who has been compromised, and second, who will be compromised. 
organization, be it be the technological industry, be it be the educational industry, it's the same thing everywhere. So there just exist two, right? That's how the cybersecurity professionals views it. And on the same line, assuming bridge, why is that really easy? Because when you assume bridge, then you can plan. Then you can see around in your organization, in your IT infrastructure to see, is, uh, is my infrastructure already been uh, compromised? And what are the things that is in my infrastructure which has been compromised? Just looking into your infrastructure, just looking into the chain, looking into the things and seeing, okay, what are the things has been compromised? That's the new approach that organizations are adopting currently. So organizers never say that we are safe. We just look into to what extent my security measures has been compromised. Is it the low, is it the medium, high, or critical? So, but the low is something that is unavoidable. So this is a new approach that has come in cyber security and in, in the world of IT that you just have to assume that this, uh, this thing is not something you can get away of or get rid of. So after going on to my second principle and before coming to my third principle, I can see uh, cars in many of your, um, your neck, right? So have you checked on the car that what the organization had put into? Have you checked this card, uh, the, uh, the, the small things, the small alphabets the organizations has put into? Can you just check that and see what is there? If you can just look into that and see what is there, it's going to be interesting. Okay, thank you for looking into that, and that's why it comes my third principle. Trust is fragile, but we trust that we don't have to. How simply I made you look into the card, right? You look into this card, right? So yeah, I, can, I could see many of you looking into the card. Oh, really, the organization have put something that I don't know about. Let's see, what are the things that the organization have put? Oh, I become very curious. Right? And so you just simply trust me. That's how we are tricking. So we are exploiting the trust, right? The simple things happen every day, right? There's a link in the Facebook saying that someone has died. You click a link. Oh, there's nothing in that link. Why is the hell people are saying that someone has died? You get an email. Oh, you have a great offer, bonus, a package, and something. Then you click a link. Then nothing happens in that link. Nothing is there. You never get that. Similarly, there are people calling you and asking information from you. Okay, what's, what is your favorite, uh, what's your pet name? Which pet do you have? And you just, oh, I love my pet. His name is Tommy. His, I, I love this. I love him. My child, he goes to school. This is school. His name is this. He's 13 years old. So this kind of information uh, that you are sharing is how you are trusting the people and where it comes, the, all the technological terminology of social attack, the spare facing, spare wearing, and sex tourism, all of this accent comes into play because we trust. And I don't say that we don't have to trust everyone. Yes, there's certainly someone in a life you trust, but then it is the trust which is causing us that we don't have to be, right? So someone, you say that, okay, the chairman has ordered me this to, to organize, so I do that, but in the IT world, when you get an email from a name uh, called chairman, how uh, can you really believe that it's a mail from that person or not? So that's how you are trusting the infrastructure, you are trusting the system, and you are realizing, uh, realizing on that, and that's how we all are getting into this one. And we are giving the data, and if you uh, remember, when you're given the data and when you uh, look into uh, some of the uh, accounts that you open in the bank account, if you forget the password, then they ask the, uh, the security person, who is, uh, what's your first, uh, what's, your, what's your pet name, what's your children, what's your maiden name or something. And that, you, this data is something you are providing to every wall, every wall. Just go to Facebook and check that in your profile. Oh, my tummy, I lovely tummy. Oh, my loving child working. So these are the information available in the social media, right? and not uh, just in social media, you are just providing this data when filling a form or when survey is being made. So this is how the world is and where uh, you are uh, sometimes becoming a victor out of that, victim out of that. 
So now my, going on to my fourth principle, security and usability, never-ending battle. So sometimes what happened, I'm, I'm also a developer, I'm an engineer, so I'm engineering things and creating uh, products for the people. While I'm doing that, I always think of making the product friendly to the user. So let's just take for example, I don't uh, mind taking a very simple password because if I start saying that your password needs to be this character, that character, oh, people just hate that. They don't remember the password and oh, I just skip that process, right? Then oh, OTP and other things validation, why should we need that? That creates a very difficulty to the people. That's where the security and usability comes in. So you, have, you are taking some information, but then maybe you don't have to take that information and you need to take information because you need to show something cool to the people. So there's always a war between the security and usability. Security professionals are also always into, okay, let's not care about usability. Let's just make the product secure. But usability-wise, people are saying, no, 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 we have to sell this product. People have to use this. If you are introducing lots of restrictions like this, then people are not going to adopt that. That's where many of us are failing or passing. So the, uh, having the balance between this is really important. But in many of the countries like us, we are giving priority to usability more than security. In the short run, maybe you are getting more customer, more people into your system. But then in the long run, when you have all of this information, all of your, the data from the customers you are collecting, then there comes an great responsibility that you also have to secure the information that you have collected. You cannot just say that you, we have collected the information, but then, oh, security, I don't know, where is that? Okay, I'll just store that. So if you are taking information in any form, if it is in the form of uh, the paper, then you are responsible to scramble that paper and ensure that the information doesn't go out anywhere other than you yourself, right? So that's where the, all the war between the security and usability goes on. And with that, I just want to conclude with my uh, final slide and my final presentation. And it also maybe the future worth creating the theme of our current TEDx, the future, the future, and what's next in cybersecurity and overall in IT. I didn't have to say anything on this one because I think currently, uh, we already have been talking about lots of things, people, I mean, this country going digital, all the system being digitalized, then re removing some of the manual works from there. So we become more and more digitalized. We are talking about metaverse, blockchain, artificial intelligence and whatnot. But are any of them, uh, are any of them possible without cybersecurity improvements? No. Nothing is impossible unless you think about cybersecurity in every one of those technology that you'll be adopting in future. That's why the future is on the technology. When we say that, yes, the future is also on the cybersecurity. Lots of data has been published, and one of the data, or a few of the data, if I have to just say, there will be 3.5 million sorties of human resource by 2022. There will be 1.8 million sorties of human resources in cybersecurity by 22. So these are some of the data being published. And this is not just a sorties in one nation or the next. It's going to be sorties everywhere. And also the matter of fact is the cybersecurity tools that is being built is more fast than the cybersecurity uh, um, cyber security for prevention tool is being built. Build, build. So cyber security professionals are being more active than we are making the cyber security solution, but the, the pace of that is slower. So currently there's a concept of cyber security as a service where you can go and just buy, purchase something and on the click of some event, you can compromise the thing. So the, those kinds of things are going to evolutionize more and more. So you really don't have to be a very, very technically savvy to uh, get into the field and do something against some organization, right? So it's just uh, security, uh, security as a service that you can purchase. There is malware evolutionize, which is um, the malware that you can 
currently purchased a malware, you can just mute it from one, one malware to another malware and inject into the organization. And there is also malware automation that is revolutionizing the whole train. So currently, you just don't have to do it manually. There's an automation in that. You just have some tools, you automate that, and something is trying to hack the system every time. Just see, I mean, just have some system into that system. Just the system then just keeps on trying on what system it can compromise, right? Similarly, the other things on that in the cybersecurity, right? These things are not going to stop. The future is there. The future is technology, but technology cannot be just, cannot go alone. It has to go along with cybersecurity. Thank you, my time has ended, and thank you all of you for listening to my space. Thank you.